Welcome to Electron Line. In this video, we're going to learn how to convert from cylindrical to rectangular coordinates. Now, what we've done here is simply taken a slice of a cylinder on the cross section of the slice, because here we know that in the z direction, the polar and cylindrical coordinates have the same z, so we don't have to worry about it. We can say that z equals z, but how do we convert from rho and phi to x and y? Well, if we take a look at our cross section here, and we look at the xy plane, and then we take a point on that plane right here, and we then draw a circle so that the edge of the circle goes right to the point. The point has coordinates rho, phi, and z. Of course, in this case, z will be zero. And notice we can express rho and phi in terms of x and y and the angle phi. Now, the way we can do that is simply say, if we want to take a look at the length of rho, the length of x and the length of y to that point, we can see that rho squared equals x squared plus y squared, such that rho is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared, and the angle phi can be related to x and y using the tangent function, so that phi equals the arctangent of y over x. As we said before, z equals z, the unit vector. Now, when we take a look at rho and phi unit vector, how do we find those? Now here we have drawn the rho unit vector, here we've drawn the phi unit vector. And the rho unit vector can be defined as the x component and the y component of that. So we have an x component in this direction and a y component, let me just draw that out here. So we have an x component and we have a y component like this. And then if we add the x and the y components together, we should get phi. Now the x component, can be found by taking rho times the cosine of phi. And then at the y component, we can take the component rho and multiply it times the sine of phi. Sine of phi would then, of course, be the opposite side. Again, let me draw this angle. There's the angle phi. Here's the adjacent side. And then here's the opposite side. So this would be x, this would be y. And so you can see that with x, y, and phi, we can relate the rho unit vector to the x and the y unit vector. We can do the same for the phi unit vector. Notice that the phi unit vector is parallel to the circle right here, which means there's a 90 degree angle between the rho and the phi unit vector. Also notice that in this particular example, the, the x component is in the negative direction, the y component is in the positive direction. Also notice that if this is phi right here, then this must be phi right, phi right there, which means that the x component is opposite to the angle and the y component is adjacent, which means that if we want to find the phi unit vector that is equal to the negative of the sine of phi, that will give us this value right there, and the positive of the cosine of phi, which is this component right here. When we add those two together, we get the phi unit vector. So that's how we find rho and phi unit vectors. Now how do we find the x and the y unit vectors in terms of rho and phi? Well that takes a little bit more algebra, and let's try that. What we're going to do here is notice that if we multiply this by the cosine of phi, we'll get the cosine of phi squared. If we multiply this by the sine of phi, or preferably the negative sine of phi, we'll get the sine of phi squared. And when we add these two equations together, then the cosine, of square, the cosine squared of phi and the sine squared of phi is equal to 1, which allows us then to solve for x. So watch and see what, I'll, what we're going to do. We're going to multiply every term here by the cosine of phi which means this becomes the cosine of phi times rho equals the cosine of phi squared, cosine squared of phi times the x unit vector plus, and this becomes the sine of phi times the cosine of phi times the y unit vector. Here what we're going to do is multiply both sides by the negative sine of phi, so this becomes the negative sine of phi phi unit vector equals, this then becomes the positive sine square of phi times x unit vector minus the sine of phi times the cosine of phi y unit vector. Now what I can do is add these two equations together. So I'm simply going to take this equation and add it to this one. So I get minus the sine of phi, well let's see here. Hmm, before I do that, I need to rearrange some things. No, that'll be good, that'll be good, no, we're good. Minus sine of phi times the phi unit vector equals the sine squared of phi, x 
hat, that means the x unit vector, minus the sine of phi times the cosine of phi and the y unit vector. Now when I add these two equations together, let's see what happens. On the left side, I end up with the cosine of phi, rho unit vector, minus the sine of phi, phi unit vector, equals, notice when I add these two together, I, I get the cosine squared of phi plus the sine squared of, of phi, which is equal to 1, so I get 1 times x unit vector, and notice that these are exactly the same, but different sign that is equals to 0. In other words, I can then write that x unit vector can be written as the cosine of phi times the rho unit vector minus the sine of phi times the phi unit vector. That's one. Now for the second one, we want to somehow eliminate... Let's see here. I think I want to multiply this times the sine of phi and multiply this times the cosine of phi to get rid of x in terms of y, and then we'll be able to solve for the, for the y unit vector in terms of rho and phi. So let's do that. And I'll probably want to use a different color so you can see what we're doing. So we're going to take this equation again, but instead of multiplying times the cosine of phi, we're going to multiply times the sine of phi. That means that this equation becomes the sine of phi times the rho unit vector equals the cosine of phi times the sine of phi times the x unit vector plus, and if I multiply this times the sine of phi, that becomes the sine squared of phi, sine squared of phi times the y unit vector. Now I'm going to take this equation and multiply it times, let's see here, multiply this times the sine, the cosine, and I believe, yeah, that will be fine. I'm going to multiply this times the cosine of phi. So I'll multiply this whole equation times the cosine of phi, so I get the cosine of phi times the phi unit vector is equal to the negative sine of phi times the cosine of phi times the x unit vector plus the cosine of phi multiplied times this gives me the cosine square of phi y unit vector. If I add those two equations now, let's see what we get. On the left side, we get the sine of phi times the rho unit vector plus the cosine of phi times the phi unit vector equals. Notice that these two uh, terms are exactly the same. One is positive, the other one is negative. They cancel out. And here the sine square of phi plus the cosine square of phi is equal to 1. So it equals simply the y unit vector. In other words, I can write the y unit vector in terms of the cylindrical coordinates as the sine of phi times the rho unit vector plus the cosine of phi times the phi unit vector. And here are basically what we would call those. Those are the coordinate transformations between rectangular coordinates and cylindrical coordinates. So if you want to go from cylindrical coordinates back to rectangular coordinates, this is how we do that. And if we want to go from, well, from rectangular coordinates to cylindrical coordinates, then we need these two equations. So let me box those in. There's one. There's the other one. So this is where we go from rectangular coordinates to cylindrical coordinates, and this is how we go from cylindrical coordinates back to rectangular coordinates. And those are important to have, that way you can always go back and forth between the two coordinate systems, and that's how we do that.